Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to recap what we already know about impulse, and then we're going to use that to solve a question. Okay, so first of all, if you remember from our previous video, impulse is defined as the product of the average net force multiplied by the time that it acts. So force multiplied by time over here, which uh, also leads to units of uh, Newton seconds for impulse. And the other thing that we recap, which is a very, very common question, is that impulse is the area underneath uh, the graph when you have a force against time graph. Just to recap once again, where does this equation from impulse actually come from? Well, if we remember, Newton's second law says that the net force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. So the net force is equal to delta P over delta t. Well, if we just bring over this delta t onto the other side, we get that force times delta t is equal to the change in momentum. This quantity on the left-hand side, this is our impulse. It also follows that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So that's another really, really important um, equation that we're going to be putting to use in a question just below. Okay, well, let's have a look at the following question. We have a stationary ball of mass 0.02 kilograms is hit with a racket. We've got a force time graph and we're going to use that to determine the final velocity of the ball. Okay, well, let's get started. Every time we have a force against time graph, I'm just gonna have a look at the units just to make sure that uh, I'm not missing something. So on the y-axis, we've got Newtons, so we're fine. However, aha, on the x-axis, I have milliseconds. So I'm gonna need to take that into consideration. Well, as we recapped um, a little bit um, before, we know that impulse is actually just the area underneath that graph. So it's the area of this triangle that will give us the impulse. Because this is a, um, a regular shape, we can just use geometry to figure out the area. So I can just say that my area, I'm just gonna, gonna call it A, is just a half base times the height. So this was this is going to be a half times. My height is 40. Well, Newton's in this case, so just like that. So it's gonna be 40. And my base is 50 milliseconds. So I'm gonna to need to be careful and add the factor of milli into my equation. So it's gonna be times 50 times 10 to the power of minus three. Uh, remember, milli stands for 10 to the power of minus three. So in this case, my area, and hence my impulse, is just 1.0 Newton seconds. Perfect, so I already have my impulse to be 1.0 Newton seconds. And um, because we're looking for the final velocity of the ball, and we've got the mass, we can work this out from the change of, um, of momentum, so we know, as we wrote um, a bit before, that impulse is equal to change in momentum, so delta P. Well, we know that our impulse is equal to the area, which is just 1.0, so I can just write 1.0 is equal to my change in momentum. I'm just going to expand that, and I'm gonna say that impulse is mass times my change in velocity 
let's call that delta v and let's take that a step further so this is equal to final velocity minus the initial velocity like so okay well if we look back into the question it says that the ball is stationary now a stationary ball has no initial velocity so we can remove this factor m u this is just going to equal zero well this leads us to this equation so 1.0 is just going to equal mass times the final velocity and we already know the mass of the ball it's given in the question 0 0.025 kilograms so we can just rearrange for the velocity so the velocity is just going to equal 1.0 over m which is equal to 1.0 over 0 0.025 kilograms and if we put that into a calculator we're going to get 40 meters per second final velocity Okay guys, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video. If there are any questions, once again, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them.